My name is Cynthia, and I'm going to talk about map layers used on the calflora.org website, a nonprofit plant database providing information on wild California plants, and how you might use map layers to help you in your explorations. Most calflora applications have a map on them. For instance, let's go to what grows here. Here's the map, and above each map you'll see layers. Open it up, different regions, different grid sizes, different climate factors, different soil factors. One of my favorite layers that I use probably the most frequently is protected area. And now the map has pastel colored areas that are protected, indicating protected places in the state. Let's zoom in here in your point arena. And if you click on it, the name of the protected area pops up down here. So this is Gualala River Forest, Garcia River, no access. And up closer to Manchester, we have Manchester State Park. Now another way to get to Manchester State Park would be to start typing it in here, Manchester State Park, but that is a tutorial for another day. This is about map layers. What rare plants grow in the selected background that I've chosen? I've clicked on Manchester State Park. Search. 17. Here they are. You can explore each of them in more detail. And if you wanted to say which ones are rare that bloom in June, you could select bloom month also. 16. A lot of them bloom in June. Another map layer that is, well, they're all useful, but it might be interesting to look at here is watersheds. We back out the map. Let's actually go to full screen with the map. These are the watersheds in California. And you can search for all plants or native plants or invasive plants within a specific watershed or subwatershed by clicking on it. So near Sacramento, we have, let's go back smaller, the Lower American River watershed here. And let's look at invasive, California Invasive Plant Council listed plants that bloom anytime that grow in this watershed, in this selected background. Not in the whole map area, but in the selected background. Search. Oh, it's going to be a lot. Took a long time. 96. Here they are. We could export this as an illustrated plant list. We could do an advanced search looking at the species attributes, look at the location profile, etc. Um, that's another way to use map layers. And one more, I mean, there's a lot more things to talk about in terms of map layers, but I'll just do one more here. Let's look at serpentine. If you're into serpentine plants, back it out. Actually, it's hard to see the serpentine layer, so let's make it outline, thick outline. There we go. All right, here in the Mendocino National Forest are some serpentine areas. And if you would like to see which plants grow in this specific serpentine area, unit three, number 116, in the selected background, you know, I'm just going to say in this map area, including these three serpentine polygons. Um, what plants grow there at all. 382. Oh, I'm getting that number from here. And if we did say just in that one tiny serpentine sliver of a polygon, only 19. Wow. That's a big change. And all of these theoretically are species that can tolerate ultramafic soils. If you have a question about layers or anything about Calflora, take your URL, copy it, and paste it into an email to us. On our homepage, you'll see Contact Calflora. Here's our email address, and be sure to include that link in your email so that we can better assist you. Thank you.